Hello friends, in this lecture we discuss the fertilization and implantation in human. So during the copulation the semen is released into the vagina that process is called insemination and from there the motile sperm it will move towards the uterus and then the fallopian tube. Simultaneously the ovum also moves from the infundibulum to the ampulla of the fallopian tube and at the junction of the ampulla and isthmus that is called ampullar isthmic junction fertilization takes place you remember this point right so this is a chance factor that both sperm and ovum will meet simultaneously at the ampullar isthmic junction that's why the all copulation does not lead to the fertilization and further pregnancy see friends this is the junction which is ampullar isthmic junction where the sperm and the ovum fertilizes to form the zygote so the entire process of fertilization can be divided into four different steps. The first is syngamy, it is nothing but the union of male and female gamete. Second is the plasmogamy, this is the intermixing of cytoplasm. Third step is the karyogamy, this is nothing but the fusion of the pronuclei of the sperm and ovum. And fourth is the amphimixis, that is intermingling of the chromosome, right? So now we discuss step by step the entire process of fertilization. So the movement of sperm towards the secondary oocyte is there in the fallopian tube. So once the sperm comes near or close to the secondary oocyte, first of all it penetrates the corona radiator. You remember this point, right? and it degrades the corona radiata with the help of an enzyme which is called hyaluronidase. This is a part of the sperm lysine you can remember, right? Once the corona radiata is lysed, then it interacts with a receptor which are there on the zona pellucida called ZP3 receptor and bind to that then the acrosomal reaction starts the another enzyme which is there in the acrosome is the acrosine and this acrosine it lies the zona pellucida and penetrates inside the sperm right so once the zona pellucida is degraded the fusion of the sperm membrane and the secondary oocyte would be there and this process is called syngamy right okay now the secondary oocyte entirely phagocytose the sperm after the fusion of the membrane of both sperm and the secondary oocyte so phagocytosis takes place once the phagocytosis started the secondary oocyte which was halted at the metaphage of meiosis 2 now resumes the meiosis 2 process it completes the meiosis 2 and now it becomes ovum right and it releases the second polar body also okay then the structural changes occurs in the zona pellucida right the remaining zona pellucida right so the zona pellucida through the cortical reaction it discharges some cortical granules I mean from the cortex some granules has been released and it deposits into the perivitelline space and form the fertilization membrane this is a very important point right and this fertilization membrane is the actual structure which prevents the second or third or fourth sperm or the remaining sperm to enter into the ovum that means it stops the polyspermy okay 
polysperm means fertilization by more than one sperm so it stops this fertilization membrane now after this the complete sperm enters inside the ovum by the process of phagocytosis as we discussed and then the three processes like plasmogamy karyogamy and amphimixis takes place and it process and it completes the entire process of fertilization see you can see here this is the corona radiator right so first of all it lies the corona radiator right then it, it uh, you know degrades the juna pellucida okay and uh, this uh, pink color is the perivitelline space where the fertilization membrane has been made okay and this is the uh, you know uh, the entire pathway of the entry of a sperm has been given here right so once the sperm is deposited inside the vagina of the female the sperm they prepare themselves also in the sense that they activate more and more they increase their mobility right i mean they prepare themselves to fertilize the ovum as early as possible so this preparation of the sperm is called capacitation right so capacitation 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 takes place in the female reproductive tract okay and after you know uh, the fertilization the i mean heating of the sperm to the membrane of the secondary oocyte then the breakdown of the mpf takes place and it becomes you know it, it turns on the apc so the meiosis 2 completes and finally form the fertilized egg or zygote right so so this slide has been you know uh, discussed earlier everything what i discussed is written here right so now the another point is that mother and father sperm and ovum is there so who is responsible for the sex of the offspring or the progeny so here we can try to understand the female only produce x whereas the male it produces x and y i mean two different kind of sperms x and y so this is the male and uh, this is female right so when x it fertilizes with the x male x sperm right so this is xx this is female and when this x will meet y then it is xy right then it is xy so here the father is responsible for the sex of the child the chances of having 50 percent male and 50 percent female right so mother won't contribute the determination of sex of the child okay now the point is that what is the fate of the sperm in the egg right so in most of the animal only head and middle piece enters inside the ovum right but in the mammals the whole sperm it enters inside the ovum i mean head then middle piece as well as the tail the entire structure and the entire structure after entering into the ovum it dissolves right except the sperm nucleus and the proximal centriole you remember proximal and distal centriole so only proximal centriole and nucleus would be there right even inside the egg also the proximal centriole and the centrioles has been degraded or degenerated right so the proximal centriole from the sperm side which now enters into the zygote we can say is responsible for the cleavage right or it starts the cleavage in the zygote right now after entering the male nucleus in the ovum it absorbs certain amount of cytoplasm from the ovum and the male nucleus is now called male pronucleus right so male pronucleus and the female pronucleus it will fertilize to finally form the zygote right so what is the significance of the fertilization now right 
so the first significance oocyte it completes the second maturation division right okay then amphimixis it leads to the formation of diploid zygote right so that the offspring is having the characters of both mother and father right third the proximal centriole of the sperm it starts the cleavage after the fertilization right and third and fourth significance is that the peripheral changes that occurs in the egg that means the formation of the fertilization membrane it checks the polyspermy so these are the very important points comes under the significance of the fertilization now after the fertilization the implantation starts i mean the movement of the zygote from the fallopian tube to the towards the uterus takes place along with that the division of the zygote has also been there so zygote now divides into the 2 4 8 16 daughter cells and these daughter cells are called blastomeres right when the number of blastomeres are 8 to 16 then that structure that solid ball like structure is called morula we'll see in the next figure right now the morula it again it is you know it remains divide so it divides and finally it moves to the uterus right and at 32 or more than that cell stage the blastomeres of the blastocyst are arranged in a way that it looks like a tennis ball right a hollow ball like structure so the cells on the surface or the periphery are called trophoblast right whereas the some cells are accumulated inner side and that cells attached to the trophoblast itself are called inner cell mass right so trophoblast and inner cell mass is there so we just have a look to the figure first see uh, this is the zygote first cleavage second cleavage then the fourth i mean third fourth cleavage so the 32 cell stage now or more than that so it is called blastocyst now and then the rearrangement and movement of cells are there so this is the trophoblast the periphery the inner cell mass this one and the hollow space is called blastocyst cavity all right so now the trophoblast is attached to the endometrium of the uterus right whereas the inner cell mass it differentiates into the embryo right main stem cells are there actually okay so the uh, trophoblast as it you know attached to the endometrium of the uterine wall right so the blastocyst becomes embedded into the uterus now right and this process is called implantation right that leads to the pregnancy correct okay so now we just have a look to the you know sequences see here the a b c d different sequences has been given and this is the pathway and uh, this finally h is the you know stage where the blastocyst implanted inside the uterus right then this figure gives us two three extra information very important information you just try to remember so fertilization occurs within the fallopian tube right after 12 to 24 hours of ovulation right so intercourse should be there in between that time only then only the fertilization takes place right and cleavage completed about 30 hours after the fertilization right then morula it produced after three four days after the fertilization then blastocyst it develops after four to five days after the fertilization you remember the days right this is important for the exams then implantation it occurs 
after sixth day that means seventh day eighth day the implantation takes place right and by the 12th day the blastocyst completely buried inside the uterine wall right and normally the mid dorsal or fundus part of the uterus implantation takes place right and after implantation the uterus is called decidua right no more uterus we use that term right so now you, we use the term decidua all right so the very important question is that the function of zona pellucida is what is the function of zona pellucida so we have seen the zona pellucida is nothing but the glycoprotein layer right and uh, the acrosine it dissolves the zona pellucida right so apart from that a very very important function of zona pellucida is that so as we know the trophoblast is there you know on the periphery right of the blastocyst and the very important property of, property of the trophoblast is that they stick to the you know tissues whether it is uterus or other part any other epithelium they can attach they can they are very sticky right and they you know uh, phagocytose those cells so the, they are phagocytic also right so what happens when the zona pellucida is not there the chances of ectopic pregnancy is there right ectopic pregnancy is nothing but the you know implantation apart from the uterus right and this is very dangerous actually ectopic pregnancy so to prevent ectopic pregnancy the implantation of the blastocyst at abnormal site has been prevented by the zona pellucida so zona pellucida plays a very important role in the implantation of the blastocyst at any abnormal site okay so this is very important point now we discuss the you know the post implantation event so you know the trophoblast now they form finger like projections right and those finger like projections are called chorionic villi remember it right and these chorionic villi forms a interdigitating zip like structure with the uterine wall or endometrium of the uterine uterus and that structure is called placenta zip like structure right like this right so that is called placenta okay and placenta it helps in the supply of oxygen and nutrient to the embryo as well as it also helps in the removal of the excretory substances like carbon dioxide and other waste material right and as the embryo grow it develops another structure that is called umbilical cord and umbilical cord it connects the embryo through the placenta right I mean um, umbilical cord is between the placenta and the embryo and it helps in the transport of substances to and from the embryo right now here the placenta is very very important structure and placenta acts as endocrine tissue here right so it produces several hormone like hcg human chorionic gonadotropin very important hormone to detect the pregnancy that is called gravidex test actually this hormone concentration is very very high in the initial weeks right so this is a very useful tool for the detection of pregnancy hcg right and second uh, hormone is the human placental lactogen hpl third is the estrogen and progesterone so these four hormones are secreted during the pregnancy but almost at the latter part of the pregnancy ninth month of the pregnancy a fifth hormone has also been secreted by the placenta that is called relaxin right very important hormone relaxin right it is also secreted by the placenta as well as to some extent ovary also okay so the hcg hpl and relaxins are produced in the women only during the pregnancy right in addition to that during the pregnancy other hormones like estrogen progesterone cortisol prolactin thyroxine etc has been increased several fold in the maternal blood right and it is very essential for the 
supporting the pregnancy growth metabolic changes in the mother right etc etc and during the course of development the differentiation of the inner cell mass is there and finally they differentiate into the outer layer which is called ectoderm and the inner layer is called endoderm in between them the mesoderm has been developed right and these three germinal layers are finally responsible for the genesis of the different type of tissues and organs okay the inner cell mass actually contains too many of stem cells and those stem cells have capacity to divide and differentiate into any kind of organ or tissue right this is the graph very informative graph so this is the hcg the initial week right up to the you know 16th week or we can see here the 9th week the concentration of hcg is too high right and then the concentration of estrogen progesterone right so these are the concentration during the pregnancy hormones of the in the human during the pregnancy right so this slide i want to read so this is just the you know uh, three germinal layers ecto meso and endoderm and uh, which tissue or organ they give rise so this is you know given here very nicely so just you go through it very you know carefully in different exams they are asking the origin of the different uh, organs now we discuss the uh, different embryonic features the major embryonic features during the development so the pregnancy is 9 month in the human female so after 1 month of pregnancy the heart is developed this is the first organ which developed inside the embryo right and uh, the first sign of growing fetus can be noticed by just listening the heart sound by the stethoscope <clears throat> by the end of second month the fetus develops limb digits etc by the end of the 12th week <clears throat> or the third trimester <clears throat> the major organ system has been well formed right <clears throat> all the organs almost has been <clears throat> developed the first movement in the fetus can be seen in the fifth month right first movement the appearance of hair on the head has usually been observed in the fifth month of the pregnancy by the 24th week or the second trimester the body is entirely covered with the fine hairs <coughs> eyelids separate <coughs> the eyelashes has been formed right and by the ninth month of the pregnancy the fetus is fully developed and ready for the delivery so that's it friends in the in this topic fertilization and implantation in the next video we we'll discuss the you know uh, the next uh, topics how the how the child has been you know uh, delivered or the parturition and the lactation so thank you very much